Hello everyone, this is Ankit and today we are going to see a pipeline feature in the GitLab which can automatically build and trigger the pipeline as soon as you push your code inside the project repository within the GitLab. So the runner in the backend can automatically run and trigger this job and the code will be compiled in the cloud. So uh, to proceed on this, the very first thing uh, we are going to see the overall how we can achieve this within the GitLab. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I would suggest you to click on the bell icon now and subscribe to our channel to receive all our videos directly in your YouTube account. All right, so let's start now. So uh, if you will see the GitLab dashboard, you will find that within your project there is a CI CD under which there is a pipeline. So right now if I click on this, I won't see any pipelines into this because I haven't configured this job according to the requirements uh, as to which the pipelines can be triggered on this repository. So now we are going to understand how we can achieve the pipelines for our repository. So I have created a workflow of how we are going to achieve this. So the very first thing for achieving the pipeline is like we have to add an application. So in our case, we are going to create a Go application. It would be a very simple application of Hello World. Basically, uh, we are going to create this in our local ID for now. And then uh, we are going to create a test file. So which can test the string that is getting generated. And if that string is successful, then uh, uh, show that our project is working fine. So this will be a simple, very simple project that we are going to deploy on the Docker container. Next, in order to achieve the pipeline, you have to create a gitlab-ci.yaml file. This is the file which basically allows the GitLab to automatically detect that the project is feasible for the pipeline. And GitLab at this point, after detecting this file inside your repository, it's automatically going to configure a pipeline for your project. And if you have defined all the stages well inside the GitLab Python CI.yaml, it's going to deploy that as well. But for now, we are going to see the build part first, and later we are going to add the deployment part as well and see how these applications uh, within the containers or the physical environment can be deployed. So it allows you to run the different strategies for the deployment which comes pre-built within the GitLab that we are going to cover in the subsequent video. After you have created a pipeline in the GitLab, still the job is going to get struck. This is because of the fact that these pipelines requires a runner. So think of a runner like a backend process which would be responsible for actually running the project. So it's going to download the source code and going to run uh, as you have configured. Uh, in our case, we are going to create a runner for the Docker and then we are going to register it with the GitLab. So we are going to cover this in our next video. Or we are, for now, we are going to do tell the pipeline. So we are uh, going to create a pattern which is going to get struck. And then in the next video, we are going to create a runner which is going to actually build this pipeline. So moving ahead, uh, the Go application is basically consisting of two parts. One is the source code, that is hello.go file. And another one is the testing of the source code, which would be hello underscore test.co file. Talking about the .gitlab ci.yaml, this is the file which helps the GitLab to recognize that the 
repository is configurable for the pipeline and it would automatically create a pipeline for any such repository for you to achieve the CI CD in your organization. Now this the dot gitlab gitlab python ci dot yaml basically defines the structure and the order of the pipeline in which it should be executed. So it's basically a yaml file where you are going to define the different stages and within the different stages you are going uh, to define what exactly the pipeline has to achieve and then it's going to go through all those stages. This is the main objective of the dot gitlab python ci dot yaml file. And uh, so within this file, you can create, you can define the image. We are going to shortly see the example of this .gitlab-ci.yaml file. Then you are going, you can also define the services and you can take some scripting or automation before uh, you actually run the, run through the various stages. And even after running your commands in the different stages, you can uh, further run some script for that. That is the after underscore script. Then you can tax the runner. Uh, so there can be different runners like a Go runner for running the Go application. Then there can be a Java runner. Uh, so these runner basically specifies that the, uh, the application like the Go would, should go on Go runner because there is a the requirements for running the Go code uh, is met on those runners. So timing allows you to Define this is one of the strategy that you can follow in your tagging. Then uh, you can also have the separate tags for the different environments like your dev stage broad environments. So depending upon this, tags can come really handy while configuring your GitLab. Then next one is the cache. You can create the cache as well. You can define the artifacts or uh, like your final binaries that are being created after the compilation of the source code so it's uh, it, this will be useful uh, if you are having an artifact so you can also create the artifacts then you can uh, apply the retry as well and let's say there is some issue so you can uh, or if something initially is not getting allocated might be due to uh, some of the orchestration related problems then uh, you can define the retry as well like if some URL is not returning some binary due to which your uh, application is getting struck then you can uh, apply the retry and in the another retry it might succeed then you can put on the timers if your job is running for a very long period of time occupying the runner then you can put on a timers that should help you to overcome the issues in which cases the job gets struck and the runner is not available. Then you can also create the interruptible and all these words are not available for you. These are the basically the reserve words which you can't use. So uh, GitLab, GitLab has specifically reserved these words for itself. So that being said, uh, I think this is like quite a lot of uh, theory that has been covered. This is all you that you need to know. Now let's uh, see the practical part of this. So if we uh, see there is a hello.go file, okay, and uh, you can uh, go through the package. Uh, we are basically creating the a package. Now the hello.go is the go file which is actually going to import a dependency of rlc.i slash code and it's calling on a hello function which is returning a string and uh, basically returning a code from the hello function and then we are having a hello underscore test dot go file uh, this is basically testing for our hello world if it's going to get this this will be successful and so these are the two files uh, which is which we have uh, which we are going to run and we are going to compile this hello underscore test dot go so if this gets successful then our testing is successful and uh, we have basically achieved uh, our uh, application has been compiled now uh, here is a dot gitlab hyphen ci dot yaml example uh, that we are going to run so here we see that we are using the image of goland okay uh, i have specified the complete path using the helpine Linux, which is uh, the the Alpine Linux comes with the shortest Docker image 
file size uh, so it's quite easy to run and then we are just installing the golang over it so you can go to the golang official repository to get the latest docker file which you can use okay uh, it might be possible that uh, uh, when you are seeing this video this has been upgraded but uh, the code should still be running uh, now before we execute our stages we have used the before underscore script to check the which code version we are running then we are going to execute basically three uh, there are three stages first one is the clean which is going to clean uh, code is going to clean all the code before we start running our and compiling our code uh, then comes your build stage in which case we are just initializing modules the dependencies basically the rsc.io slash uh, this is we are going to initialize and then uh, we are basically running the test using the code test command so i can show you this as well if i can here here. and if we see so here it is hello.co and hello underscore test.co file these are the two test files and then we can directly run co mod in it you can provide the domain uh, which is unix in username and record so it creates you will see that it creates a co.mod file okay uh, this go.mod basically shows the module and the go version is 1.14 which is required to run this and the next command that we are basically executing is the go test in which case is going to test the code and if it finds it find then it's going to give the pass so you can run go test so it's basically finding the module it is founding the dependencies uh, which is rsc.io slash cute it has found the dependencies and it shows that it has passed the test so this is our uh, this is how we are compiling our code right now uh, and this all should be automated and if we see uh, this basically downloads the other dependencies of the code.sum if we see this uh, this is the other dependencies which the rsc.io is getting to run the code okay so uh, we are going to compile like we are going to commit all of this code in the repository uh, because the go.mod and go.sum can actually check the uh, code if it's getting changed or not so it basically matches the entire code to verify that there is nothing uh, whatever we are deploying on our systems actually matches to what we are having in our repository and there is no difference between the code so it's good to commit the go.mod and go.sum in the repository and you are going to find that inside the same on my github repository at this point uh we are going uh we are going to complete this video for here now before doing that uh i would like to push this uh in the repository and show you how it works so what we can do here is uh, we can go to our project and we are going to create a new project and we are going to say this hello world and this will be a private project written in the language hello world application that we are creating as an example now you can uh, create any of the uh, using any of the languages not only uh, go but uh, you can use any of your languages now we are uh, going to quickly run all these commands and uh, then we are going to copy all these files so we have uh, i can go to my git bash so i have already configured the username and the user email And I put next cloud username and 
then we can clone this repository. All right, so we have basically a clone and empty repository. And if I move one directory down, so uh, there is the hello world. Okay, and uh, I can do cp. And I can just copy all these files. Sun. All right, so let's go into this hello world. And if there are all the four files that we want to copy, so we can do hello.co under the hello world. Then we can hello underscore test dot go the hello world uh, if you don't want to type all of these things what you can do is I am going to share the link to the repository with this code and you can directly take the clone uh, of the repository and use this code while practicing the same so you can move it to the and if I do other side okay. I can go inside this hello world. So we are having this. Now I can do the git status and the git about this. So we are going to add all the files. And we are going to get the map and we are going to push. So added the hello world application and we can push to the master. Now as soon as we push this, uh, we can go back over here and click on refresh. So we get all the four files, okay, and we can now go to the CICD and pipelines. And if we see the pipeline now, uh, it says that it's stuck right now, okay. Uh, this is because, uh, as I told you before, uh, that we are we need a runner, okay. So we have basically done till here. The next, in our next video, we are going to basically create a runner and register it with the GitLab. As soon as we create a runner and register with the GitLab, it's going to deploy this on the Docker container, and uh, this job should get succeeded. So this is all that I have for you in this video. In our next video, we are going to create a runner and going to complete this pipeline. Thank you for watching the video. Please leave in comments if you are having any doubts.